Welcome to the Tactical Tavern. I'm your host, Tomas Alas, and in this video, we are reviewing the Columbia River Knife and Tool HZ6. Is this thing a mall ninja's dream, or could it serve as a real-life mini samurai sword? We're going to answer just that question and go over the features to help you decide if this is right for you. Before we get started, make sure to subscribe so you won't miss future videos helping you save money and upgrade your gear. With that being said, let's cut into it. This is the CRKT HZ6, which stands for Hirozakuri 6 inch, as it is based off a traditional Japanese sword style from the 8th century, popular in short swords and tantos. It is designed for the modern warrior and it has an emphasis on penetration without sacrificing much in the way of slashing capabilities. We have an overall length of 11.376 inches, sporting a 6.5 inch blade comprised of SK5 high carbon steel. I personally really enjoy the SK5 carbon steel because, in my experience, it is very tough and takes a fantastic edge. It still has some decent corrosion resistance, in my experience a little bit more than 1095 because it has a slight bit of chromium in the composition and I feel it's beneficial especially while carrying this around for long periods of time. It can help fight off oxidization, however it maximizes toughness and edge retention over stainless resistance, so certainly keep that in mind when carrying and maintaining this blade. I have to reiterate this steel is super strong, great tempering, but it is also the geometry of the blade. It may look like it's simple bony knife but there is much much more going on for example the spine here coming to an apex with a distal taper with a reinforced tip capable of going through just about anything i really think this is simplistic but sophisticated with the refinement of the tip but yet it flows down to a thinner grind for some slashing and cutting chores it really is extremely well produced when i was looking at photos of this online i thought it was just going to be a sharpened pry bar but it is really an elegant slashing and stabbing machine. To me, I personally consider this like a tactical fillet knife. This blade is super tough. It's full tang construction with 0.21 inches thick and quite hefty, coming in at 8.4 ounces. Although the blade is a little bit on the heavier side, that balance resides in the handle, and I personally enjoy this for the type of blade that this is, making it extremely agile and dynamic, allowing you to recover quickly after any slashes, thrusts, or stabs. And while doing all these fancy moves, helping ensure that it doesn't go flying across the room is some super grippy handles. Now I say handle design because the cutouts in the blade are also a part of that full tang design with some G10 grips on there that are fairly smooth to the touch but any slight amount of pressure gives you a secure locked on grip. This thing is not going anywhere with or without gloves. Having a very tactile feeling handle is super important on this blade because there's essentially no guard preventing your hands from running up onto that blade. However, I have no worry about doing that because of how the handle is designed. Not only the flared up shape but how tactile these hands seriously lock on it feels like there's glue anytime you grip on this blade it's not coming out keep in mind what this blade was designed for i feel it was really designed for combat applications and not everyday carry cutting rope or baking a cake and dicing up veggies this thing was for hard duty use so that handle certainly comes across that way it's definitely a little bit on the more aggressive side i enjoy that i think it really gives you that locked on grip but if you wanted to enhance it you can certainly grind it down with some sandpaper or wrap it up with some grip tape if you're carrying it close to your body. And speaking about carrying around this blade, it comes with a Bolteron sheath. At first, when I looked at it, I thought it was Kydex, but it is Bolteron, giving you a little bit more thermal regulation, both in hot and cool temperatures. It is a fold-over design with some different slots and eyelets in there for mounting options. However, I wish there were a few more, especially with this being a tactical tool. I want as many ways to mount this in a variety of different situations. But that being said, you can easily enhance that and change them, add what you want with a drill and a Dremel tool. So it is customizable and not entirely a downside. I'm a really big fan of how large the opening is on the sheath, allowing you to quickly get your blade back in there. It also has fantastic retention and no rattle. Because of the fold over design, it also has a thumb ramp that you can use here to more quietly deploy your blade or just pop it off for faster access. I did find it odd that the drain hole was on a side of the blade. I feel that it could have easily been added to the bottom of this. Maybe there was some thought there, so do me a favor, let me know in the comment section, do you think the drain hole should be on the bottom or is there a good reason why it is on the side? Especially with this being a little bit more of a higher carbon blade and what the intended purpose is, I wouldn't have mind a little bit of a bigger drain hole. Going into it, I was quite skeptical of the new clip. However, this thing thoroughly impressed me. I would say it's even easier to mount than a DCC or a Tracker Dance style clip, 
It has amazing retention, great sizing, and it has more mounting options because of that slit in the top of the sheath. So you can configure it a multitude of different ways. I seriously love this. I would even want a couple more of these to mount onto different knives. It was that good. This CRKT HZ6 is a combat tool first and foremost. However, because of that complex and beautiful grind, I feel that it can actually lend itself to other cutting activities. In testing for daily cutting, I was able to cut through ropes and zip ties quite quickly, cardboard boxes, of course, and even some carving in a pinch to get a fire going. Even though this won't be my recommendation for a survival tool, I feel that it can still get it done. And it helps that this is the same steel as the Puzan Wilderness Bowie from Work Tough. And I think it is a fantastic design. Lastly, for a combat tool, this thing is a no brainer. I absolutely love it. And even though there's no guard on the handle, which may make some people a little bit apprehensive about adding it to their selection, I think because of that handle design, you get a fantastic secure grip on there. I have no issues or worry about running up onto that blade, especially if you know how to use your blade right. I also like the fact that there is no guard allowing you to increase your grips on this blade and quickly deploy it from concealment or even on a chest rig, not having to worry about it getting caught up on any straps. At the time of this review, you can find the CRKT HZ6 for around $125, and I think that is insane value, considering that the customs and production versions of the Williams Blade designs go for $500 and upwards to around $700. So you're getting a similar design in a package for $125, sign me up all day. And to answer your question, I would absolutely choose this over the CRKT Hisatsu. Do me a favor and let me know what are your thoughts on the CRKT HZ6 in the comment section down below and what other tactical fixed blades would you love to see reviewed here on the channel. If you enjoyed this video or you found it helpful in deciding what gear to carry, make sure to drop a like, share, and subscribe. While you're there, turn on post notifications and follow us on Instagram at Tactical Tavern so that way you won't miss future videos helping you save money and upgrade your gear. With that being said, my name is Tomas Alas. Thank you for watching. I'm excited to see you in the next video. And remember, be prepared, be practical, Stay tactical.